Good afternoon everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a great day and if you're new to the channel and want to subscribe button, that'd be awesome. Welcome back to part two of the Nissan Skyline R32 GTST front rotor and brake pad install. Shout out to the boy at Terra Firma for shipping these out to me super quick. This is the correct part number for the Z32 calipers, GTST R32 rotors. These are the, again, correct parts number. Just gonna go ahead and take off the caliper, take off the rotor. Passenger side, I'm gonna let the bolts to the caliper soak in PP Blast here for a good 30 minutes and then wiggle them out. Smack this rotor to take it out. Double checked all the lines, they are still doing good. And then my buddy Ernesto is coming over to help me bleed the brakes a more efficient way. I don't, they have a good bite to them. The brake pedal does feel solid, but I feel better pumping the brakes and relieving air opposed to doing that single self-relieve gravity bleed. And thank you again so much everybody for your continuous love and support and the positive feedback on the questions, answers, and future plans for the channel. Video I did and uploaded the other day. Thank you so much. I'm glad I can clear the air, not in like a negative way, but show you guys and or tell you guys how I make my money and again, how hard work is always rewarded no matter who you are. If you have a dream and want to accomplish it, you have to work because again, dreams don't work unless you do. And remember, always take those risks in life because who knows, maybe that risk you took will just change your life forever for the better. But let's just go ahead and knock out these rotors. All right, all right, we got the rotor on, obviously, and the new 5.0 Hawk pads. Clearance is great, significantly better than what it was with the, or other rotors up there. Again, clearance is good. Drained a lot of fluid out, but I just kept this bottle open and had the brake line drip into here since it is still the 600 mole tool. So we'll go ahead and knock out the other side, flush the system out. Hopefully Ernesto is here soon because I really want to drive this tonight. All right, just got the Japanese passenger side done. All good. Everything fit as it should. Right now I am rotating the wheel left and right to make sure that I have no binding of my brake lines and so far everything checks out. Update, so I got the whole brake system bled once more, still not convinced that there's enough air out of the system. And then again, there's no such thing as bleeding out your brakes too much. I mean, there's like a tight grip with this fitting here, but again, just not convinced. But I did find my whole reliable bleeder bottle guy here. So when Nesto comes in, we'll bleed the brakes twice again. Find everything back up, double check that all the arms and bolts are tight, take it for a test drive, and should be good to go. Also, in the last vlog, I said that I ordered the GK Tech polyurethane rear transition mount. That should hopefully be here tomorrow afternoon. So this will be again another, won't be a two-bar video, but it'll consist of two days. So yes, still waiting on Nesto. What's good? Update, so my camera died, so I charged it a little bit, but thank you to Nesto. We ended up bleeding the brake system a couple more times. I guess after with the Gravity Universal Bleeder, it actually bled the brakes pretty well. Car off, pedal feels great. Obviously car on right now. Pedal feels a little bit soft, but it grips a lot sooner. But I know there is like a 500 mile braking period for brakes, so I'm gonna go through the whole... DB actually sends you instructions on like how to bleed your brake system. You know, you go from 35 to 45, and then you do like a soft brakes five times, repeat. Then you do like a hard braking method, repeat. And then you do like a super hard method, and you repeat. And your brakes should be good. So right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the store. I'm gonna drive around the neighborhood a little bit, see how comfortable the car feels, and then head to the store, grocery store, get some snacks and all that. And then I will catch up with you guys in a bit. So if you know, if this vlog gets uploaded, I survived. All right, just got back from the grocery store, did my break, break-in period. Honestly, this rotor and pad setup is perfect. Car stops on a dime. When I was first driving, the pedal felt a little bit soft, 
but as I progress in braking, the pedal got stiffer and now the braking is more precise and more aggressive, which I like. The brake fluid hasn't dropped any. I don't see any leaks or anything on the ground. Again, the brake lines are not binding. The rotors, my dumbass touched the rotor and burned my hand. But they're not like super hot. And again, the pads are doing their job. Caliper is obviously clamping down. Looking at the rear side as well, everything is up to par. But honestly, this brake pad and rotor setup is killer. All right, so the whole braking system on this car has been completely upgraded. Again, we got the Cusco Brake Master Cylinder Stopper, which I highly recommend on these older cars. Upgraded brake fluid, got the upgraded rotors, upgraded pads, upgraded brake lines. I don't know what else we can do other than a hydro brake in the near future. When I do plan on getting serious and competitive with the Skyline for drifting. So next on our list will be to install the rear transmission mount when I get that in tomorrow. Should be very easy from the videos I saw. And after that, we'll go ahead and focus on cooling. As you all know, I got my Coil Rad radiator and my Nismo low temp thermostat waiting to be installed. I'm just waiting on my Samco hoses, which should be coming in sometime in March because they are on back order. Then after cooling, I guess we'll focus on wheels or more, more or less tires. We'll focus on getting some good tires for the R33 GTR wheels. Don't want to go two baller because these are going to be like spares in the very near future. So probably scrap these guys in some Federal 595 Super Steels. And then we'll go back to doing our power mods. I do want to get the downpipe. I hit up ISR for their bell mount, which is just like, it's pretty much turbo back to the cat and it utilizes the cat. But for their bell mount downpipe, I'm looking at five to six weeks still. So kind of bummed on that. So what I can do is get the Tomy outlet turbo pipe and they connect that to the Apexi GT downpipe. So I have to build an exhaust or build a downpipe, but that's gonna be around, I think like almost $800. And then we still gotta do the front mount intercooler, which I'm going with Blitz. So a lot of exciting stuff coming to the skyline. Cannot wait to make my full vision a reality with this car. And then once all the power mods are out of the way and maintenance is up to date with the tune we'll go ahead and focus on the body kit again don't know if i want to do a gtr and vertex collab or if i want to just go full vertex it's still up in the air but i will catch you tomorrow when we're doing the rear transmission mount install it is the next day the mailman just delivered the gk tech polyurethane transmission mount pretty simple Install, we'll take the bracket out. We must go ahead and remove that bracket and take the old transmission mount out and then put the new one in and then put everything back in place. Okay, so for the trans mount, you want to support the transmission with the jack and jack it up ever so slightly. There's going to be six volts to take out on the bracket. We got two up here, two or well, one in here, then two on the other side, and then one that goes up to the bushing. Go ahead and remove the bracket to the exhaust. Just these two bolts here, and then everything else should drop right out. Okay, got the transmission bracket out, as well as the transmission cross member. We'll just go ahead and plug away all these screws here, and you reutilize the exhaust bracket. All right, got the GK Tech polyurethane mounts in. Just looking at it feels so solid. This should definitely improve shifter feel, and transmission shifting because before when I would shift if I don't let the clutch out just right you can feel like rocking in the transmission but with this everyone said it's a much smoother shift and they can clutch kick and the transmission stays solid but we won't be doing that until we get more practice but again easy installation all the bolts torque down to spec cross member bolts good as well as the inner bolts to the transmission and the cross member to the polyurethane trans mount. But that's gonna go ahead and conclude today's videos, guys. Thank you everybody so much for your continuous love and support and making it to the end. Next install will be the Nismo short shifter that I ordered uh, about five days ago. It's about to ship out of Japan. So shout out to the boys at RHD Japan for always looking it up with the shipping and the great customer service. And you guys, if you're new to the channel, you wanna subscribe on, that would be awesome. 
Remember, aim high, drive low. We'll see you next video. Take care.